if you're rich and make a lot of money, does that automatically make you wealthy? Well, in today's video, I'm going to teach you what it means to be rich and what it means to be wealthy, because you're going to find out very soon that they're actually both polar opposites. And later on, I'm going to tell you exactly how to get started in building real wealth, no matter what level or where you are in your career. Hi, my name is Dr. Jeff Anzalone, and I'm a periodontist and founder of DebtFreeDR.com. And this channel is all about helping doctors and other high-income professionals grow passive income streams to reach financial independence using passive real estate investments. Now, if you're a subscriber to this channel, thank you, then you've heard me discuss one of the most influential books probably out there and probably one of the most popular financial books. It's also known as the quote, Purple Bible. It's Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Now, if you missed the video when I discussed some of the lessons that you can learn, I've actually put it below in the link uh, to this video, okay? Now, one of the first concepts that he actually discusses in the book has to do with the difference between being rich and being wealthy. So he talks a lot about there's a major difference between being rich versus being wealthy. Now, growing up, I thought that if a person was rich, then that automatically categorized them as being wealthy. Maybe you did too. But actually, it, it seems after you read the book and listen to some of uh, Kiyosaki's videos, this certainly isn't the case. He stated that the rich... They actually make lots of money. You probably know some rich people, but the wealthy, they actually have no money worries. They don't work. They don't worry about money. Okay. Now I realize that you may be new here and, and some of these concepts may be new to you and you're a little bit confused. So let's break this down for you. Okay. First question. What does it mean to be rich? What is your definition? Well, Actually, the best way that I know of how to describe this is just take your typical high income earning professional, physician, dentist, chiropractor, pharmacist, engineer, attorney, you know, whatever, you know, take, take your pick. Now, you should know that income is the main way that wealth is typically created. OK, but income by itself, it does not equal wealth. Okay. Think about that. Most people think high income, you're automatically wealthy, but he's talking about something totally different. He states that just because you make a lot of money doesn't necessarily make you wealthy. So someone that's considered rich simply means that they just take, they just make a lot of money each year and they have little to no assets to show for it. A perfect example of this would be a professional athlete. Let's say somebody that plays uh, the National Basketball Association, the NBA, and they make eight million bucks a year. But what if this player spends eight and a half million a year on a flashy lifestyle? So the mansion and the Bentley in the driveway, that's nice. But what happens if they get injured or their time in the league's up? Then what? How do they keep paying all those notes? So they're rich while they're competing on the court, but unfortunately, most of these players go broke when they're not on the court. Okay, that's a professional athlete. Let's take a look at the typical physician. He or she may make $350,000 a year, but what if they also had a $350,000 a year lifestyle to go along with that income? Think about it. This person actually would be better off making, let's say, $80,000 a year and saving half of it. Does that make sense? So think about those numbers and, and think about that concept. And really, if you have kids, this is a, a great teaching point to pass along to them and tell them, say, look, just because someone, you know, you, you go down the street and somebody has a new Mercedes in the driveway or they live in a big million dollar house, that doesn't necessarily mean that that person's wealthy. Now, remember, Kiyosaki said that the rich, they have lots of money, but the wealthy, they don't worry about money. Now, I really want you to think about that statement and just let it sink in. 
the wealthy don't worry about money. All right. So I want you to imagine never having to worry about money. Wouldn't that be a nice feeling to have? Who, who wouldn't want that, right? Come to think of it, um, I would like to be rich and wealthy. Now, I realize that having a lots of money is, is great, okay? It, it puts you in a position to buy nice things for people, uh, to help people out, help people in need. You can take your family on cool trips. But I believe that not ever having to worry about money is even better. So after I read the Purple Bible, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I continued to research those that are rich versus those that are wealthy. And what I found that there is a stark difference between the two. The simple difference is that a wealthy person has something called sustainable wealth, even if they aren't working. Whereas somebody that's rich will only be that way for a short period of time until guess what? The money runs out. How many times have you heard about uh, lottery winners, professional athletes, celebrities, you know, they once live uh, life of the rich and famous, you know, they, they live, they live the high life. And then what happens? They lose it all after the money runs out, after they quit making movies or playing sports, or, you know, they go through all their lottery winnings. And unfortunately they have to file bankruptcy. It happens all the time. And it's due to their lack of financial education and financial management. Now to really put this message uh, you know, across to you and put this concept in perspective, I'd like to take a look at two people. The first one would be Dr. Mark. Now, Dr. Mark Good old Dr. Mark. Now, he's a 42 year old. He's a self-employed oral surgeon. He's in Louisiana and he actually is making $375,000 a year. Okay. But the thing is he relies 100% on his active income. So guess what? If his hands aren't working, wisdom teeth aren't coming out. Okay. So think about this by most people's standards in the United States, Dr. Mark is considered rich, right? He's considered a rich person. So he's married. He's got two kids in private school lives in a nice neighborhood. He golfs a couple times a week, country club. And he, you know, he takes a couple of three trips, expensive trips a year with his family. So clearly Dr. Mark has plenty of money at his disposal now to fund his lifestyle and look the part of a successful surgeon at, you know, his point in career in his early forties. So he has expenses just like you and me. Okay. He's got a $900,000 mortgage. He leases two cars. Both kids are in private school, member of a country club. And he actually pays for not only his family's health insurance, but all of his staff at his office's health insurance. And let's don't forget about a little thing called taxes. Okay. Now, when you go in for Dr. Mark and you subtract out all these expenses from his annual income, and then you remove the, his 401k investments that he puts in each month and his college savings for his kids and the little investments he makes here and there. Really, Dr. Mark isn't left with a whole lot of money at the end of the month. So check this out. After taxes, he takes home $245,000 a year or a little over $20,000 a month. $20,416 a month to be exact. And when you add up all of his expenses, all of his expenses total $18,500 a month. Okay. Think about that. Roughly 20 grand, 18, five a month. That doesn't leave him much room for a cushion, does it? So he's literally working paycheck to paycheck making 375 a year. Does that sound familiar to you? So guess what? Good old Dr. Mark has got on a nice pair of what? Golden handcuffs is think about it. What other career can he go into that's going to allow him to continue the doctor lifestyle and pay all these expenses? He's an oral surgeon. He's got a dental degree. What else does he know? Okay. And so 
since wealth is defined as the ability to continue living, enjoying life and paying your bills while not having to work, what happens if Dr. Mark, if he wants to take a couple of months off during the summer, travel with his kids, or what if he has an unfortunate accident and becomes injured and can't work for an extended period of time? How long do you think that he'll be able to continue paying for all of these expenses? two, three, maybe four months top, right? So what this means is good old Dr. Mark, he's rich, he's not wealthy. All right, now let's take a look at another example of a wealthy person, okay? Kiyosaki said that while the rich have lots of money like Dr. Mark, the wealthy really don't have to worry about money, right? So let's contrast Dr. Mark with good old Dr. Gary over here. All right. So we have Dr. Gary and he's a 47 year old pediatrician. He's married and he makes $275,000 a year in a group practice in Montana. Now, even though he makes uh, 100 grand less than Dr. Mark a year, this guy is actually considered wealthy. Let me explain. So Dr. Gary's dad, he was a professor at a state school in Montana, and he taught him early on the importance of saving and living below his means. He even introduced him to Dr. Thomas Stanley's book, The Millionaire Next Door. You may be familiar with that. So shortly after medical school, Dr. Gary wanted to serve his country, so he joined the Navy. Guess what the Navy did? Not only did they pay for Dr. Gary's medical school, but they also paid for his four years of undergraduate tuition. So he actually entered private practice with zero student loan debt. He bought a modest house in a middle-class neighborhood, and all three of his kids attend public school. All right, so he has no mortgage. He owns two paid for used cars. He bought them used public schools, not private schools. Okay. Now, ever since he got into his practice, he has actually contributed to and maxed out his practices 401k. But he also read the Purple Bible and he started learning from Robert Kiyosaki and, and people like him about the difference between two things. He learned early on about the difference between assets, which actually put money in your pocket versus liabilities, which actually take money out of your pocket. He also learned that being wealthy meant being financially freed. So he knew that wealth equaled freedom. And honestly, good old Dr. Gary didn't really like the, the idea of making a six figure income yet living paycheck to, to paycheck like many of his colleagues did that he went to get to uh, medical school with. So Dr. Gary, his main focus is on investing in at least one, sometimes two passive real estate syndication deals. And he learned all about this from Robert Kiyosaki who talked about being wealthy. Okay, so currently Dr. Gary is in 13 different syndication deals and he plans on adding two more this year. Okay, his goal is to continue building multiple streams of passive income from his assets that is going to allow him to retire early yet maintain his current lifestyle that he has really for the rest of his life. So what this means for Dr. Gary is that his passive income will pay for him to take his kids, let's say on a trip to Destin for a nice beach, beach vacation for a full month over the summer while they're out of school. Okay. Dr. Mark, on the other hand, no passive income. Dr. Gary, he invests for passive income. He invests for freedom. So question, if you were to stop working today, all right, but as, as long as you have income flowing in that you're not directly working for, but you can still maintain your current standards of living, 
are you cons considered wealthy or rich? You're considered wealthy, right? Because you can stop working. You can maintain your lifestyle because you have this passive income coming in from your assets. So my question to you is now that you know the difference between somebody being wealthy and somebody rich, do you consider yourself wealthy or rich? Now I understand that a high salary can make you appear wealthy, but it really takes commitment and sacrifice to attain real wealth. It takes hard work, you know, early on, just like anything in life it takes hard work. Now to take it a step further, I firmly believe that you can build sustainable wealth through uh, passive real estate, such as myself. And the cool thing is that you can actually build your own strategy to fit your personality. So for instance, if you want to start off, a, you know, a little s slow and small and, you know, kind of get your feet wet and maybe become an active investor, then you may just want to purchase a single family home or maybe a duplex that may be the best fit for you. You know, whatever your personality is, fit your personality. Now, for those of us that are busy and don't want to deal with tenants like me, then passive investing in real estate, such as syndications work pretty good. Now with real estate, not only do you benefit from appreciation and cash flow, but you also get some of the absolute best tax advantages that the IRS will allow called depreciation. So if you've been thinking about how you can attain financial freedom in terms of working more hours or, or possessing more skills, think again, it's actually going to take a mindset shift to get you think to thinking of wealth in terms of money that's being generated for you while you're doing other things, not always working. So once you understand and once you realize that there's a limit of actually how many workable hours there are in a week, then you can actually start the process of focusing like Dr. Gary on investing in assets that's going to produce passive income, whether you're working or not. Now, remember being wealthy means you don't have to go through life always trading your valuable time for dollars to survive. If you're ready to learn what it takes to start building multiple streams of passive income, good news. I've put together a free passive income guide for you. Simply go to debtfreedr.com forward slash free guide. I'm Dr. Jeff Anzalone. Take care.